Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's the brain of the mainframe, Niall Scal here with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Billy Tucci. We're Yo, here, what? buddy. Episode 42. How you doing? I I, I moved my Lee Disworth writes crickets already. Come on, guys. We really do need crowdfunding beer mugs. I think that would be fun. I'm doing awesome. good, pal. I moved my camera over here because yesterday uh, I got a lot of a lot of slack. For the light being in the camera, but you know I've got work to do, so I'm making a cover right now. Real quick, here it is. Oh, very nice. So um, I got, that's I got for the new Raggedy Ann and Andy book, right? Raggedy Ann and Andy fight back. How do you know what Raggedy Ann and Andy is? Who <laughs> doesn't? Don't you guys all sleep with one on either side of you? I don't know how you would know. Oh, I should hit my light. Let me fix, <laughs> let me fix my little studio light there. Hang on. Yes, indeed, my friend, indeed. Yes. If I do that one, I turn this one up because this one gave me that halo. Does that look a little better? Well, let's see there. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I think the back and then the front should be a little more. Remember it gave me that halo? It was yeah, hip. looking good, buddy, looking good. Everyone will deal with a little bit of light on the side because you're a working man who working. doesn't want to sacrifice any time with the fans and the people of the show. That's right, and enough about me. Um, and uh, But, you know, right now, before we get into all the, all the pleasantries, I think we should invite our guests and we can share our pleasantries. So tonight, Niall... Uh, and all of our crowdfunding centurions and crusaders all across the world is our 42nd episode. How 42. about that? And the 42nd Infantry Division was the division I was in when I was in the Army, actually. So that's kind of cool. And speaking of Army, our guest tonight has built an army of toys. He's investigated a lifelong mystery and, Chris, and has crisscrossed the world in search of technology and a technology-ridden utopia, actually. I don't know how to mess that up. I don't know, because I'm, I'm doing too many things at once. But anyway, we'd like to welcome <laughs> our, my great friend, I, someone I've known for, I thought it was about 10, 15 years, but we've known each other for 20 years, because he still looks like a little kid. Uh, Vinny Tartamella. Vinny, where are you, buddy? Vinny, <laughs> welcome to the show, man. Hey, Billy. Hey, Niall. Thank you, you so much for having me. You got to forgive me for looking like this back and forth because I have my computer set up here and I have my camera there. So I'm trying to see if I'm in frame and trying to talk to you, Niall, because I, I hate to talk <laughs> to a blank thing. So I keep looking over here. But uh, <laughs> So I was getting a little confused. But what's going on, Vinny? Uh, just working, man. Get, getting these projects done. Uh, pushing the new book, City of Venus, Dead City. You know, nice. and congratulations on on this Indiegogo. All right, yeah, twenty three days left. You just started. You're up, you're up to almost five grand, um, mm -hmm. and uh, just you know, welcome. We're we're happy to have you. It's been uh, it's you know, it's been a while since I've seen you. Really, not that long actually, mm -hmm. but um, it's always good to talk to you and hear your voice. You're one of the nicest guys in comics. One of the most talented people in comics, and. Um, and uh, I don't know why don't you for those for, for the yeah. people out there why don't you tell us a little about a, bit, a little bit about yourself how you got into into the industry from your from working with you know McFarland Toys and being you know one of his lead designers and uh, and what brought you here to your now you're crowdfunding your own comics. Well, Billy, first off, thanks for all the great compliments. You're too kind to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, well, my whole career kind of started like almost straight out of high school. So. Uh, Todd had like a search going on in his in his comic books, like in the back. He was looking for artists for uh, for his different areas of his of his companies, right? So, um, from what I remembered, uh, they weren't very specific on what they were looking for. But I wanted to put a portfolio in, right? So my brother Frank, he decided, hey, instead of just sending a portfolio, why don't you do um, like a video? Send that something different. So we were like, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. All we right. sent it. Right away, they got back to us. wanted wanted an interview. I went up there and I stayed. <laughs> so so from there, I mean, I did a whole lot of work for Todd. I designed so many figures, uh, which was kind of interesting too because um, I wasn't expecting to to get like that position. I thought they just needed like you know maybe a couple of uh, new guys just to try out some stuff or try mm -hmm. a line of figures. But I ended up designing like just so many different things from working with Kiss. To doing uh, stuff with Clive Barker, oh, wow. uh, the 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 Spawn Medieval line, just a whole slew of cool stuff. Oh, sweet! Oh, so, awesome. um, so yeah, now, can, can, sorry to interrupt. What was the process like? I'm really curious. The whole, um, you know, designing for figures. Uh, well, for uh, I'll start with the very beginning. Um, 
it was basically he had the McFarlane monsters. He was starting to do them like in a like a six inch to seven inch line. So um, kind of like my trial piece was working on uh, sea creature, Dracula, and Frankenstein. So they'll they'll give you like a couple of pointers like like they want to see what what your interpretation is like what you want to do with these characters but they'll give you like the guidelines so like frank's time to go well don't don't give them a flat top don't go with like that traditional universal monster look but try to play with something different you know so it kind of like evolves from there so um once you kind of get a pose down they're kind of cool with it mm -hmm. um usually we'll talk with like the head of the uh the art department um which it was these two brothers who, who ran that division in jersey so, um, like, I, I dealt with them straight first, and then after they, there's kind of like a, um, we try to map out like a, like a better theme for like all of the figures. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, let's say if uh, Frank signed Dracula, they're gonna have more of like, uh, like leather and, and chains and that kind of stuff. So, we try to incorporate more of those elements into the other mm -hmm. uh, figures in the line. So, once we kind of have like, like a good system worked out, usually we'll, we'll, it wasn't Skype back then, but it was a video call with Todd, who was in Arizona. So then, like, he would give, like, approval or what do you like, what he didn't like, you know, and you might yeah. make some changes from that point. Um, but it was it was pretty smooth. Uh, and from there, it goes down to the, to the sculpting department. And uh, there was always a different system with those guys. So you might have someone who roughs out the figure. And then you'll have someone else come in and do like the bootstraps and some of like other specific elements to a figure. Oh wow! So they would actually so they would switch up. So if someone does a rough, someone else comes in. So just right. kind of like right, you got like someone's doing the pencils, someone's gonna come in and ink. So yes, yeah, something like that. Unless the sculptor was very quick, if they yeah. were very quick, uh, and they could get a ton of detail in, they kind of just let them do the bulk of it, and then someone might come in and just touch up a little bit here and there. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. That's so how, yeah. So how old were you when you when you sent the video in? Uh, I, I was about eighteen or nineteen. <laughs> and then you went right. to, Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it was it was pretty fast. Um, and you went out there yeah. did, and you worked with Todd. Did you work with Todd or did you work remotely? Uh, it was remotely, but then he would he would come like uh, maybe twice or three times a year. Like he would he would kind of drop in, uh, mostly around Toy Fair. He would mm -hmm. pop up for that. Because then, you know, it's like in the Javits Center and, you know, it's a big deal. But from what I understand, he hated going to Jersey because it was like it was up in the sticks. It was I guess it was uh, the commute was something he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the guy, he's a very brilliant man. I'll, I'll give yes. him that for sure. Oh, definitely. The uh, Todd father. Yeah. As he's he, known. Yeah, he, Todd father. He definitely he, he approaches things kind of like a kid would. You know, like that, that he has that enthusiasm all the time, mm -hmm. but then he's got that business side to him. So it's like a perfect, a perfect blend. That's yeah. for sure. So then, you know, you're working. How long were you working in the for the toy field? Uh, let's see, maybe with him about a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I went freelance because then the um, 9 11 happened and mm -hmm. the, the area was kind of. Uh, well, I, I don't know how much you guys remember, but that tri-state area, uh, there was a lot they didn't show on the news. Yeah. And, yeah, and that kind of town we were in wasn't the best place to be. So, like, when you know, when you feel uncomfortable, it's, just, it's like, all right, it's time to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, were you in Jersey City? Like, where were you in Jersey? No, uh, uh, Bloomingdale. They call it Blooming Jail. Oh, man, was it like a shithole? <laughs> <laughs> it, it felt kind of like you know, kind of like a hick town, mm -hmm. sort of. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, that, yeah. There was a lot of like bars in that area too. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> TJ TJ James asks, "Hey Vinny, did you work with the immortal Bo Smith at McFarland Toys?" There you go. Uh, a little bit afterwards, uh, we had some communication with him because it was one of the silent partners uh, mm -hmm. who was working it. Because it was it was the two brothers and this other guy, and that other guy kind of split, but. Um, he was kind of still in contact with a few people, and yeah, we got to meet. I uh, got to meet uh, both from there. Oh, very um, good. Yeah, we did it. Oh, that was such a cool yeah. dude. We got to get him back on, Billy. Yeah, he said he'll come back on. He's waiting. You know, we gotta 
you know, you know, we got a very, very busy schedule. I don't oh, know no. if we could fit someone like Bo Smith in, you know? <laughs> you know, we can't we can't keep helping everybody, Nile, you know? <laughs> I know, I know. What are you gonna do? Hey, while we have a second, let's just say hi, Vinny. We got some great people in the chat. We got Lee Ditsworth here, TJ James, Victor Victor Rodriguez. Crystal Van Divers here says uh, on Facebook she had a po- uh, message on one of our posts and she hasn't seen you in forever, Vinny. Um, oh man, <laughs> Victor, there you, <laughs> there you go. Victor Thomas is here. Metal Movies and Brewskies is with us. Peter Sharon, welcome. Brian Blevins, good friend of the show, welcome to here. We got Adam Post with us who's saying, "Hey guys, Vinny is a superstar. Check out his stuff." Peter Sharon, I mentioned already. Um, we've got so many. Mandy Summers is joining us tonight. Cole Irwin, awesome. welcome. All so great just give people. a shout out. So many people here. All yeah, great people. All. Like, this is like we're, we're building our crowdfunded family here. It's pretty cool. It is. Totally. It's fun, man. You, know, you get our friends and we can see them on. And, and Niall, uh, you were talking about something interesting that try to find a way to actually make the people that watch us interact with our guests like Vinny Moore, right? Yeah. yeah. So I've been looking into some things. And if Brian Blevins is still in the chat, him and I were talking about this, is actually working on getting a call-in service, right? So people mm-hmm. can actually call in. You know, we can post a link that can actually link, a, a obviously, a voice connection that we can hear and can oh, go wow. on the show. And so if, me, you know, if the lovely Mandy Summers wants to come on and say, hey, Vinny, he's got a question for you, she can do that. And another thing we're looking at is we want to be more interactive, right? So so check this out, Vinny. We, we did become monetized, right? So we're thinking, hey, why don't we each episode, you know, obviously we have to fund the show. This costs money to make the show. And, right. uh, you know, why don't we do like raffle tickets? You know, maybe anyone that does like a dollar or two dollar super chat will actually put you into a hat. We'll draw it live. You know, we'll stop like, you know, say the show's, you know, say we'll go to 1030. We start at 9 to 1030. We end the raffle at 10. And then our team here can get all the names in a hat. And on the air, we will pull a name. And that person will be our guest fan host for the next episode. That's pretty brilliant. I like that. Yeah. yeah so, you know, we're all in this together, right? So why not? How fun would oh, that yeah. be? Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing I was saying, too. I mean, you know how it is working as an artist. If it's not your family driving you crazy while you're working, you're kind of alone, right? Yeah. So yeah. It, it's it, it, these people are have been fantastic. They've been like better than family. They, like you said, Mandy's there, Adam, uh, all these great people, and the fans. I mm-hmm. mean, that's the one thing I kind of liked about Twitter is that you could communicate with them. You talk with them. Uh, they give you feedback on how your projects are going. You know, I, I always dug that. I mean, it really worked. Yeah. Um, There's a great. I'm, I'm a, no, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Go I, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was You're say, the guest. I, I wasn't really using Twitter as much. And then I heard with the crowdfunding, it, it goes hand in hand with it. So that's why I jumped back on, you know. And in a couple of months, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting my numbers up pretty pretty big, you know, yeah. from having only like 100 and, I don't know, 120 people. Now I'm, I think I'm around 750 or close to it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, your, and your campaign's going well. I mean, you've got 22 days left. You're, you're 188% funded. And, I mean, I'm sure you're going to get much more. Um you know, it's a great. I mean, I think you can attest to this, Vinny. There is an awesome community building up, mm-hmm. or, or it's been built. I should say it's been built, but it's now expanding, right? Yeah, it's expanding, definitely. and people are really starting to dig what's going mm-hmm. on in this indie community. And it's it's now burst the bubble, I would say. It is now coming to yeah. a point where so many great creators on so many different levels. And what's awesome, and Vinny, I'm glad you're on the show because now you are part of the crowdfunding comics family forever and always. And Whether um, you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> I and, love it. <laughs> and we're just seeing the great support, the same faces, you know, sharing the tweets, this and that. I mean, how can you get any better than that, right? You can't. Uh, right now, there's so many great Italians in it. <laughs> I would just yes. say that. we got a lot of Italians. It's like the golden The Tucci's, the Scala's, the Tartamella, huh? <laughs> It, How the freaking books, huh? Mix in the you know like the early Marvel days and stuff with all the Indaloons working there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you get you know. <laughs> yeah, and actually speaking to Adam Post's point here, publish could could publishers could donate the prizes. We're actually in talks with some creators um, that are going to send us some of their campaign goods, um, and yeah, we're going to raffle those off during some of future episodes once they start shipping. That so that'll cool. be another cool thing that we're going to be doing. We got a lot of stuff coming up, Vinny. But again, this this is it's about cool. you. This isn't about us. Yeah. This is about yes. you. No, so I, I, I need to know what's inspired you, my friend, from a wee little lad yeah. to, to the amazing creator that's inspiring so many other indie creators out there. How? What is your origin story? How did you get started? 
Well, do, from from a kid, yeah. Um, I I, I remember I, I had a, a a flu or something. I was sick for a while, and um, we had a cousin that that came over and wanted to cheer me up. So grab one of my brothers. They went to the to the comic book shop and they brought back a whole bunch of books, all different ones: Batman, Spider Man, and I just sat there like you know coughing my brains out of whatever I had. I'm like, this is cool, <laughs> you know. And I, you know, really got into it. I was like maybe seven or eight, and I, I fell in love from from that point on, you know. And some some of the first books I started really collecting uh, were like the Todd McFarlane Spider Man, um, like the Mark Silvestri X Men books. Mm-hmm. All that kind of stuff, uh, Jim Lee, uh, the stuff he was doing, you know. And then as I got older, I was expanding it more or going into back issues. So anything that was like John Byrne or um, uh, John Buscema uh, with Stan Lee, uh, then Frank Frazetta. Oh my God, when I found Frank Frazetta, I was hooked. Oh yeah, right, right. Oh yeah. Oh my God, he, he's the reason why I wanted to really start uh, telling stories. Uh, cause he could do it with one image, right? Yep. Yeah. He, he, he was able to just get everything across in, in one shot. So I figured, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. And if I could do it in a comic book format, that's even better. So like over the years, you know, I just kept kind of refining my, my style and what I was doing. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I, I guess it's a good point to jump from there to the work stuff. So after Todd, uh, I did some freelance work. I was doing designs for uh, Diamond Select, Randy Bowen, uh, Toy Biz. So I, that, that was, I guess, my my first time working with Marvel, you could say. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I did some Spider-Man designs, which uh, it looks like some of them have been popping up recently, too, to be honest. Really? Um, yeah, I've seen a couple of my designs that look very similar in the Spider-Man video game that came out. Oh, cool. uh, A couple different places. I was like, wow, look at that. I wonder, <laughs> but you know how it goes. Um, so fr- from there, I started going back to the comic book scene. Um, uh, I was doing stuff with uh, Blue Water. They had all those um, all those political figures. Yep. Um, those hit all all over the media. So like, I, I'm not right or left. I, I don't care about any of that crap. Um, t- to me, you know, all politicians are the same. So I was just looking at it as pretty much just just a paid a paid gig to do portrait work since yeah. I was good at it. Um, but yeah, th- those were all painted covers that I that I had done. Uh, before all that, I I actually almost got to work for Marvel. Um, I, I work with uh, I was starting to work with some of the the editors there. Uh, Ralph Macchio loved my work. Yeah, uh, I love that guy. Yeah, I was only doing pencils. I used to write them all the time. Used to talk to them all the time. I was living up there still, so uh, I was able to drop off stuff whenever. But uh, he wanted to put me on Marvel Knight Spider-Man. He said, "Don't send any more. Th- don't give me any more samples. I don't want them. I'm going to put you on this book." So I was thrilled. Two weeks uh, right before I signed the contract, he gave me a call and he says, "I'm sorry, Vinny. Joe Casada is putting his friend on the book. I'm not going to bullshit you." I was like, "Oh my god, dude! I was devastated." devastated from almost drawing the character i love so much growing up to not even being acknowledged anymore so that's when i started teaching myself how to how to computer paint and color um and from there that's when i started getting more freelance work all over i did stuff for uh devil's do i worked with tim seeley on the hack slash books for image as well oh, i did cool. a couple of his covers yeah we yeah, actually we i think uh frank amazing i have some hack slash books i wonder if we have oh, any with your cover you might. Um, I did the, the remember the reanimator uh, crossover they did. Yep. Uh, I did one of the covers on that. On that, Joe Jusco did one. Um, let me see. Uh, the uh, when when they when they launched it with Image, I did the cover to issue three. So she's like coming out of like these basement doors and there's mm-hmm. blood everywhere. Uh, they used that like blown up like 15, 20 feet high, and they put it all over all the convention scenes for that year. Oh, nice. Oh, wow, that's awesome. They, they did that at the image booth. But nobody told me. So when I went to my, <laughs> my, my table in New York, I'm like, holy shit, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Vinny, is it, so is it true of people everyone wants to know? Do you still have the chalkboard um, right above your bed with people to kill? And Joe Casada's name is at the very top of it. <laughs> I can't confirm or deny that. <laughs> 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 and, 
It's oh, one of those things. I guess. We all love our pal Joe. Um, except for you. Um, and rightly so, because he's... <laughs> but anyway, sorry about cursing, Niall. I know we can, that hurts us getting monetize, monetized. And I have I didn't curse all yesterday, and I just cursed. No, yeah, it's boy, fine. Billy. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> we'll take it out of your paycheck. There you go. Uh, uh, Vinny, are you... So you're self-taught, except for maybe, like, art school in, in high school? Art class? Uh, yeah, and I fought with the teachers. So, yeah, I'm pretty much all self-taught. <laughs> oh, really? Did you... Did, now, when you were working on this, did you ever get a chance to go back to school and say, hey, you know, Miss McGillicuddy, look? <laughs> Actually, um, I, I took like the, the advanced placement art class, I remember in high school, and mm -hmm. they, there was like the two, um, there was the two options that you could do with that course. So it, there was one that was all drawing and one that was like maybe 50% drawing and then like 20% sculpting. And there was a couple of different things. I went, no, I just want to do the drawing part. And she was fighting with me nonstop. That I remember. And I'm like, why? She's, no one ever gets a high score with that. I'm like, well, I'm going to do it. So I, I got a little bit of satisfaction because when I did do that and I sent in like you know all, all that art, artwork, uh, I I got one of the highest grades she ever she's they've ever seen in that school. Mm. And she, and she gave me a call and and thanked me and told me. <laughs> oh, nice. So yeah, I got some satisfaction on that one. <laughs> Where'd you grow up, Vinny? Uh, Middle Village, New York, and in Florida. Oh, okay. You know, my my wife is from Middle Village. Yeah, Bridget. that's 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 when we first uh, actually talked was uh, at one of the Big Apple cons back in the day, and uh, yeah, your wife was there, and and we were we were uh, catching up on. Uh, oh, you guys talked about that? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. She, her grandparents lived on like Seventy Seventh Street, right by the park, like two houses down from the park. Oh, nice. That's is great. That, yeah. Anywhere oh, is near Matthew drinking a white Russian yeah. behind you, or is that Matthew, milk? Is, Matthew drinks his milk. He's a <laughs> he's a big milk fiend. We, we were on uh, 67 Drive. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, it was pretty close. She was by Juniper Valley, right? Um, Juniper Valley. Not from Middle, Middle Village. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> but apparently <laughs> it, was, it was. I I just would go there for like Easter and stuff like that. You know. Oh, okay. Nice. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny That's story funny. that my first Easter I spent with your mother um, <laughs> uh, you know we went uh, and first I just had met her grandparents maybe a few times before and we're in college and we go to uh, to her grandparents house in Queens for Easter and her, my my wife her brother after dinner mm -hmm. uh, her brother and her sister all fall asleep in the living room that's what they would do they would eat and they would <laughs> sleep and take naps so I'm sitting there with her parents and her grandparents. <laughs> and when I first met them, and they were looking at me like, okay, what are you guys doing with our darling little Debbie? <laughs> and I know where to go. And I guess I'm still here, so I guess I charmed them. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that, isn't that what they do, though? She's like, I'm going to sleep. Especially, especially in New York. Had, they just fell asleep. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, that's my whole family. They eat and they sleep. And then yeah, I would so just sit incredible. there like twiddling my thumbs like, what are we doing now? What's going on? Everyone wake the heck up. All right, I'll that's go play the, with the dogs. It's <laughs> all it's all the it's all the pasta and pastries. Oh, you get yeah. the food coma. Well, yeah, because yeah, then you're like you're. It's like oh, have some more, have some more. It's like no, I'm good, I'm good. No, you barely ate anything, and it's like, are you kidding me? Do you realize how much I ate? But then you're like, fine, and then you just keep eating and keep eating, and then before you know it, everyone's asleep. I think it's it's built in to those Italian families to say that. Oh, you don't eat, you don't ever eat. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and don't refuse it. If you come over my house, don't refuse the food because they're gonna don't. force you to eat it. So are we being invited to your house? Is that what we're saying? Because I believe uh, your darling bride is Italian too, right? now? Yes, Sicilian, 100%. Oh, man. Hey. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Northern Italian myself. That's where, the, nice. that's where my grandfather says the blonde hair comes from. He says, you're Northern Italian. Yeah. That's true. That's what they say to me too. That is pretty true, I'm yeah. Sicilian though. Siciliano. So, but yeah. then they say, oh, the Vikings settled in Sicily. And then I'm like, yeah, no, why are we all so short? <laughs> Well, there is some truth to that because my grandmother too. She had she had blue eyes. That's kind of a rare thing to have down there. Yeah. Um, again, they said yeah. On, on on her side, there there is Viking blood. So yeah, also so, Sicilian. Right? We will kill the bears and bathe in their blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> son, That's awesome because you just hear that, but you don't even see where it's coming from. That was great. A Viking lord. 
So anyway, Brian right. Blevins asked Vinny, he wants to know how hard was learning the learning curve for doing the interior colors and what software did you use? Basically saying how hard was it to learn to, you know, digital ink and color? Yeah, well, when, when I started, um, I had one of those really like those big oversized Wacom tablets and uh, that thing was, it was brutal for me. I, I, I would do a little bit at a time here and there and then at one point I just said F this and uh, I let it sit for like a year before I touched it again. Mm-hmm. So and then I like, I like forced myself. I said, no, I, I, I got to get this thing going. I got to do it right because I want to make my own books. I don't I don't want to have to rely on anyone else. Um, yeah. And, and the, you know, the more you do, uh, the more jobs you could do, the the better your opportunities are. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so what um, are you using now for uh, equipment? Are you doing are you the Wacom route? Uh, yeah, I'm still doing that. Um, I have the Cintiq. Uh, I've, I've had it for a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was starting to get some some better freelance jobs, I'm like, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna upgrade to, to that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's all pretty cool. Um, it's challenging when, especially if you're teaching yourself how to do this kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. Because mm-hmm. I, I know I approach things differently than most. I mean, a lot of people love to just lay down flats and go go in that route. Um, I kind of want to just. Uh, start painting certain areas so like i'll drop down like kind of a like a neutral color and then i'll like i'll, I'll build up like our i know where my light sources are going to be so i start to kind of build the piece from there um then it's like about the, the focal point uh the main characters the lighting sources on them and you know it's it's kind of like a um, sort of like, like a painter would would approach a painting but it's just a little bit more forgiving doing it on the computer than like oil paints or something you know yeah i hear you I hear you. We got a, a little visitor in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Come on. We're waiting. Let's just see. I'm trying to be uh, Is, he, is uh, that his Viking gear? I don't know. Is he that, ready for that's battle? His, that's his Matthew gear. Yeah. So, the, the, so Vin, the, well, I'm going to go I'm ahead. Sorry. I was going to say he's going to get up and he's, he's going to throw his kid down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Third story porch. Oh so, boy. So Vinny, let me ask you now. Now you you know, you it seems like you've got quite the following there. I noticed like with Twitter and we're doing the post and oh, I back you yeah, I'm backing you Vinny. I got you this and that. Um how has it been grow, you know, growing these friend building these friendships and everything that you have going on? Um you know, have you, are you in any collaborations with any other creators? Uh tell me a little bit about, you know, your your build up in this this online community. Well, it's been pretty awesome. I kind of, uh, I'm extending like how I am at the conventions with fans. So, uh, like for someone who hasn't really had like a ton of gigantic mainstream work, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of like middle level, I guess here and there. So not too many people knew about me, but once they come to my table, once they start to talk to me, uh, I remember at a bunch of conventions, I had like just to see if people around me and I see like the other big names, like they started messaging me uh, like when I got home from the convention. Like they want to know more about me too. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Because like they go, you don't have any big work. How do you have a following like that? I'm like, because I'm nice to people and I just I I give myself to them and vice versa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I kind of applied that to how I work social media. Same same way. I, I I come at everyone like a friend. You give me respect, I give you respect. You're cool with me. I'm cool with you, and it just builds from there. That's kind of what I've seen. You know. There, yeah. There's 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 no need to have ego. There's no need to be a jerk to anyone. Mm-hmm. And if someone is rude to you, there's always ways of working around it. And if you can't, you block them or you know you back away. That's it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's gonna deal with you know like I say with social media breeds a lot of you know these keyboard John Gotti's you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just not worth it. You know, especially if you could like kick the shit out of him if you ever saw him in person. Oh yeah. You know, and that's a, it, it pays me nice because you're like, oh geez, look at this guy. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guys, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, it's, you know, I, but there are times, right, Vinny, you just feel like, oh, man, you just like bite your lip and yeah. you're like, ah, oh, you get well, that of course. Your throat. You're like, all right, yeah. you know what? Walk away for a second and then you forget about them because they're not even work, you know. That's exactly it. But you know what? It's mostly like when I was younger, too, and like those forms were just kind of like a new thing. Mm-hmm. So everyone was, was all hiding, they were all hiding behind the keyboard and like the people who would fight. Yeah, some some of them would like, you know what's funny? I never had a big fight with anyone that was just a fan. Mm-hmm. Anyone I really had a fight with online when I was younger 
was another artist. And nine times out of ten, it was because I I would watermark my images. And they're like, really? why? You, what, what? Yeah, that was the strangest thing to me. Yeah. Why don't you just get a website? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You have to watermark everything. I'm like, dude, it's because my work has been getting stolen. I don't want it to be stolen. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's yeah. where that's where like the majority of the fights came from, which I never understood. It's like, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. What do you care? <laughs> yeah, why would they get mad if you watermark your own work? I mean, yeah, I would right? recommend yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. That's just freaking weird, man. I, I've had work mm. stolen all over the world, man. All over the place. Oh, I'm it's sure. It's insane. Yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? When they mm -hmm. do stuff like that. And it's just like... You know, and, you know, now you look, you'll find on Facebook, they might have stole your, your art, you know, for T-shirts and stuff. They did that to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pisses you off, you know? Oh, yeah. Extremely. Dude, I, I, to this day, um, not only not only regular people, I've, some professionals have still ripped me off. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. I don't want to throw anyone on the bus, but, I mean, up until recently, I had a famous uh, Supergirl piece that it's, like, been on, Devi on my DeviantArt for forever. It's got, like... I don't know, close to 30,000 or more views on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know a specific artist, he saw it. And he copied my image and he put it on a DC cover for one of their books. Shut up. What? I, I, I called him out on it. He ignored me. Wow. But I, I put it on social media. I let people know. When, when that kind of thing happens, I let people know. Yeah. So that's another reason why I'm into uh, indie books, crowdfunding, because mm -hmm. F, F all of them. They don't deserve the jobs that they have if they're doing shit like that, you know? Yeah. And you know what bothers me, and I, I see this a lot, and obviously I'm not going to name drop, but I see other creators out there, and I think what's really grinding my gears on this is now I'm starting to see them post that they're going to shows selling artwork, but mm -hmm. all they're doing is they're literally copying other art, and they're selling oh. it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, how are you doing? It'll be like, oh, this uh, Joker, uh, you know, by, you know... Um, you know, with the with the style of Bruce Tim or something, I'm looking. At, I'm like, that's this, that's you, that picture is on. You go to Google and type that in. It's right there. It's the yeah. same exact image. And then yep. I see like people like, oh, I'm holding this great piece from this artist. And don't get me wrong, like I I appreciate good art, but when I see like legit, like to me, it's like almost trace. Like yeah, they did a really good job coloring the piece. But yeah. it's literally like you, if you hold them side by side, it's like that mm -hmm. looks like traced work. And they're selling yeah. it. They're selling. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, the the worst. There's one better than that that I've seen at, at big conventions. Um, it's Frank Amazing the, knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> what, one of the, one of the things that I've seen where they actually print out like a Jim Lee X Men piece or something like that, and they have a wall of these prints with numbers on it, and they're selling them like it's theirs. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I, and they're dealers, right? A lot of times they're dealers doing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I saw it. What was it? Uh, at the Orlando show at the MegaCon. Um, I, I didn't go for years. I finally did. And when I went, I think they had changed owners and artist alley was like, I don't know, quadruple, uh, the number of tables I've ever seen in any show. And like every other table were like what I call those scam artists that they're not doing any work. They're literally just printing from their computer and selling these, these printouts. I'm like, yeah. how is this allowed? Why was there no vetting? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mandy Summer says, and it has been a rough couple. Of it's been a rough couple of days on Twitter. It has, and uh, she said, I yeah. literally had to watch the replay of our crowdfunding comics episode from the other day. And talking to Vinny is always helps. Also, one of the nicest guys ever. It has been a, a rough couple of days uh, in the social media scene, right? Th right, Billy? Yes, it has. It's it been has. Interesting. The, it's been, it's been, very, been interesting. very interesting. I've stayed up late watching some things, and <laughs> it's just. You know what it is, though? You just can't lose hindsight of why we're all here, right? Exactly. Don't, don't let negativity, so. don't let any negativity hold you up. Don't let anything get you down. You focus on yours and your own, right? And support I, those I, that support absolutely. you. And don't yep. let anything bring you down. And that's yep. that's one of those things, right? We're always going to hit a speed bump. But that, that's why we have wheels, because you know what? They, they go over it. You know? Exactly. And, 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 and we move many, on. You know, because we, we, we can have a, we were talking about, uh, you know, now that the show has grown, we've gotten 42 episodes already. Um, we're talking about, you know, doing some more interesting things because our audience is growing. And and uh, now, why don't you give a little a little uh, heads up on, and maybe Vinny can join us so we can have our guests participating in this. Yeah, we're uh, going to start getting into topics. About, like, yeah, little format changes and little things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really want to bring, 
We really want to bring the fans in even more to our show and more experience right. like our, obviously, creators like yourself, right? But we also, mm-hmm. we want to talk about some stuff that's going on. You know, we want to talk about some stuff in the news. And we and we want to do it uh, from that thousand foot view, you know? Like yeah. looking down, like why, why is this going on, right? How, exactly. how can things get better? I mean, we can't. I mean, what, we all just, we're just opinions, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's, it's fun to talk about because when, you know, there's that saying, you know, two heads are better than one, three heads are better than two. I mean, it's almost a way of working things out because we're all creating. I mean, this show, the embodiment of this show is about crowdfunding, right? Right. You know, and, and like I say, you know, Billy it was at the forefront, I would say, of the 90s there doing the self-publishing when you don't have all these tools. And now mm-hmm. that he's back in the game, man. He's back in it with just a, with a fire that once that flame hits you, you're ignited with the passion that he's spitting out. And, yeah. um, and that's what we're embodying here. You know, and I think talking about what's going on will actually help other creators in getting things together. You know, because oh. if, if this is going on, hey, how do you work through that? Well, let's talk about it, right? Yeah. Let's talk oh, about dude, it. You I, know? Niall, I, I agree with you 100% on that. And it's one of the things that, that I saw, too, right away when I met Billy for the first time. And it's it's the same thing, too. Like, weren't you, weren't you getting uh, – it was a hard time trying to get noticed by the big companies? Oh Didn't yeah, you just no, say, yeah, yeah. Nobody would hire me, and then I'm yeah. like, you know what? The hell with you guys. I'll do my own book. Exactly, and and I think that's what's moving this right now. That's what's moving all all of us creators. Like you said, Mandy's out there. Uh, I want to say hello to her again, and thank you for the great compliments. But again, same thing. She had a cool cool idea. She she talked with her kid about it. You know, and mm-hmm. she wanted to develop those stories into an actual book. That is an awesome thing. And now she has Wart the Wizard she's doing, you know, and yeah. she's doing it how? With crowdfunding. <laughs> she's doing it like all of us. Mm-hmm. It's it's about getting that dream out there. You have something in your head. You want to get it out there. You know people are going to enjoy it. And they're going to enjoy it more than the crap that, that the big two are doing right now. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're going down a path nobody wants. Yeah. They're not listening to the fans. Yeah, We're they, listening they, to the fans. Yes, yeah, because they don't have yeah. to anymore. And, you know, once yeah. you're a publicly traded company, mm-hmm. you know, what basically what I believe that the big two are, and, again, I'm a huge fan of this. i got a lot of friends that work for them and stuff. Yep. And it's not the creator's idea. Yeah. You know, they, they all have. They are, they are putting out some good. They still are putting out some good stuff. Oh, yeah. Do have, great, they are putting out some good stuff. Yeah, right. no, it's great work coming out. Mm-hmm. But again, a lot of the other stuff, with, with, when it gets to corporate or something and they don't care, like nobody's buying this book. This book, we're going to cancel it again. They yeah. don't care because I think the comic book the, the divisions of these major corporations are now nothing more than write-offs for them. No, billions ex- of dollars. Exactly. If, if, a book, if they have to cancel a book, but they wanted to make a statement about something or it's a pet project of somebody, you know, a suit, you know, out in California or, mm-hmm. you know, in the city or something. Then yeah. you know, oh well, they'll do it if it if it bombs, you know, well, so what? They'll just make another one. They'll just restart another one. But in the meantime, they're getting a lot of press, you know, yeah. with with uh, doing social justice things or whatever the flavor of the month is. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. No. Well, well and yeah. isn't that the whole? Lot? Isn't that the problem though? It's all right because I have friends too that are still in the business as well. Uh, great guys. But what are they doing? They'll take like some of the books that are selling really well. And when it comes time for like these comic shops to order them, they'll they'll have their specific number, and then they'll they'll toss in a bunch of the books that aren't selling. And yeah. what happens is the uh, the comic shop owners they're paying for the shipping, which is a lot. It yeah. becomes a lot, and then they have the the like you said those SJW ones or whatever the flavor of the month is is sitting on the shelves. No one's selling it, and it's taking up space. Who is it hurting? It's hurting the retailers. It's hurting all of them, and it's hurting the fans because they don't want that crap. Yeah. Right. Well, think about it. Right. Why? You know. All right. We're all going to follow what we follow. Right. I still buy. uh, I'm a diehard Batman fan. You know, my mainstream superhero is Batman. That is my thing. And I still buy Batman books. I still read them. You know, I like what Greg. I love Greg Capola's art. I love, you know, what he's done it and some other guys done on the series. You know, friends with him, too. Right. And uh, Mm -hmm. but there's a difference here. Right. Here's the difference. And let's use Mandy Summers, for example, use you an example as well. You're creating. She's she she created is working on her first book, right? But guess yep. what the guess what her fans are getting? They're getting to know the creator. Mm-hmm. She is accessible to them. You Absolutely. know, she interacts on video. She asks questions. She talks to them. She friends them. You know, mm-hmm. go message some of these other great creators. You're not going to get a response. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So not only it, go well, ahead. It's, it's also the numbers. You know, it's it's 
if they're if they are bombarded nonstop, because like you said, someone at, at Greg's level, mm-hmm. forget it. Who, how is he going to respond to all these people? He can't. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. It, it, it's that too. It's like the, us starting creators or, or the ones that are kind of mid level. We are accessible. Um, we're able to talk with them, and you know we're not going to get f- flooded and bombarded nonstop. When mm-hmm. you're like at you know those rock star levels, forget it, man. I seen them. I seen them run when the doors open at like New York Comic Con, and they go yeah. straight in the back looking for these guys. Oh yep. yeah, dude, yep. it gets scary at a point, you know. Oh yeah, but then and then I look like guys like Brian Polito, right? He's making yeah. a good living for himself doing what he's doing, right? And he mm-hmm. he keeps it. So you know he he's a rock star in the comic world. You know, I mean he's yeah. he's got this great Lady Death universe. He's still accessible to his fans. If you sure. message Brian Polito, Brian Polito will get back to you. If yeah. you do a good post about Brian Polito, you're getting a thumbs up. You know, you're getting that's a sworn. True. You know, yeah, that, he loves his fans true. so much. He's like, I'm gonna throw a convention just to hang out with the people yeah. that buy my books. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, think about it, right? Yeah. You can you can try to work for the big two, and again, nothing wrong with them at all. Nothing wrong with them. I, I yes, I buy their books, yes. Mm-hmm. But at the same token, you go to these other models and the indie model, and that's the thing. Like these are the conversations that we have and things. And someone say, oh hey, you know, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing a little more with my fans and stuff. So instead of him trying to sell thirty thousand, fifty thousand books, he has three, four thousand backers. Right. Right. And mm-hmm. he, and now he's funding everything. So. It's it's such a personal process. I feel the crowdfunding I, I so. is such a personal process, and mm-hmm. it's just I mean how how great is that, right? It, Vinny, it, I love your work, and guess what? We're friends now. Freaking bonus! I'm yeah. getting your artwork. I'm getting your book. I love it. And look, we're friends. Yeah, it's it's very true, dude. More than half half, half the people who've been uh, buying like my first two campaigns. Um, uh, they they still reach out uh, if they if they say something to me I usually I retweet it if they get the books uh, you know they're gushing over the work I mean mm-hmm. how cool is it to say oh look I got a book in Sweden now you know and the guy send me photos or yeah. uh, you know Germany or all these different places I'm like dude that's better than what I would have gotten mm-hmm. trying to get through these uh, through these other uh, systems of, of doing things and like you said they could reach out we could talk back you know. Um, but yeah, going back to that point too, with, with, with being professional or having an ego, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, yeah, it's up to the creator, but I always feel it's it's better to be cool with everyone. You're going to have a better experience all around. You know, yeah, the time of the day is kind of short, but if you could do a quick hello or, or a quick thank you, yeah, that could make someone's day as well, so why not do it? Oh, yeah, exactly. You're and, you know, not. and that's really like when me and Billy were talking earlier about the whole, why don't we get fans on as guest hosts? You know, like, yeah. why not do that? You know, maybe well, we'll have the, fans the ones who de- who determine uh, the comic sales. So why that's not right. have a show with them involved in it? Yeah. You know, they're the ones that buy all these books. They're the ones that are paying mm-hmm. it out. I'd love to like, you know, remember now we were talking, mm-hmm. we want to hear what, what they want. You yeah. know, and and, mm-hmm. and Vinny, you're 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 I, I you said I'm sure you're the same as well. Is that every one of my buddies who makes comics, yeah. we all got into it because we were fans. Yeah. Every one of us, mm-hmm. we got like because we we were comic fans like you. You're seven years old. You know what I mean? You're you're dying of of uh you know I don't know what do you got again? You got the uh, <laughs> some flu or something? Yeah, the, the, yeah, you know. Clap. Uh, and and you know you, you find your little little salvation comic. You know, and then it becomes a passion of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, not, and not that's all, true of all at, of us. At, at seven, there's no clap. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is it. Who said the clap? He said the clap. What's the wrong? Clap? With you? Isn't that that like that <laughs> <coughs> cough or something? Isn't that what that is? The claps or I, something? I whooping I cough. Said fruit. Like, oh like, shit! <laughs> no wonder why the doctor looked at me. For I'm like, yeah, I think my kids got the clap. They're like, what? <laughs> He's an animal. Unbelievable. <laughs> At seven, look at this guy. <laughs> Unbelievable. You guys are embarrassing yourselves. Jeez Louise. He's my cat. Can you guys see my cat? I could show you the skunk oh, yeah, yeah. that keeps running by me. The skunk? <laughs> There's a skunk that lives in. So I, I took this the curtain down because we're, we're throwing. Our, my son's turn one on um, technically Thursday, but we're throwing a big bash uh this saturday so i've got the curtains and everything down so i got this big slider in the studio here because the whole basement my wife was lovely enough to let me convert into my whole studio um 
with every with everything around you know got my drawing areas oh, here nice. you know That's we awesome. watch tv over there like i got my mini bar with my beers nice and then i got this scary door right and uh every now and then i see a little skunk run by and it freaks me out but i can't show it on camera and one night i was doing some work and i felt something brush by my leg they didn't smell it or anything and all of a sudden he stops four feet in front of me. I jump back two feet. We look at each other and we both run in opposite directions. I was like, holy crap, I didn't get sprayed. And he ran right by my tools. And I was oh like, shoot, God. how am I going to get my stuff? It's like 10 o'clock at night. My neighbors hate me because I'm like doing trim and stuff. You know, right, some right. casements. But anywho, that's that's besides the point. I'm, I'm getting yeah, you, off track you, here. You got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. If you get yeah. hit like that. Get the Are you serious? Juice. Like a real skunk? Yeah, real skunk. And he, he ran by like literally like three times. He went once this way, then once back that way. I don't mind, to be honest, because they keep other pests away. But that freaking freaked me out. What are you, up in the woods? I am in the, well, kind of. I'm in a woodsy area. I'm in a woodsy area. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah you you got to be careful. Deer there, Niall? What's that? You got deer? Yeah, we're going to go bow hunting on my deck. There you go. My neighbors are going to love it. They're just going to see a freaking deer go right down. Their kids oh, will be dude, screaming. Dude, you guys are you're going to love that. When when I was when I was in Jersey working for Todd, uh, I was sitting at one of the <laughs> one of the pizza places close by and no kidding, I saw a moose run across the street. Where in Jersey? Dang. In Jersey, up there and in, in, I can tell you it was up in the sticks in, in Bloomingdale. Wow. I'm like, am I seeing what I'm seeing? I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, are we in Canada or, or the States? <laughs> That's awesome. Holy crap. How far out of the city is that? Uh, what was it a good, let's say, maybe 40 minutes? Wow. Oh, crap. Correctly. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, we've seen deer there too. But yeah, when I saw that, I'm like, dude, that thing was bigger than a car. And it's just like trotting along. Oh, yeah. They're bigger than horses. They're bigger than most horses. Moose. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I'll you guys... tell you, though, if you ever get, a, get your hands on a moose tenderloin, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. I heard. I heard it was the best. That's right. Oh, yeah. People have talked about that a lot. So good. And uh, someday, I'll, someday I'll, I'll moose hunt. I'd like to get one with my bow, you know, a lot of, a lot of meat. So, <laughs> a couple uh, of years of meat right there. And Marcia Cook, Darwin's um, uh, uh, widow, uh, actually her father hunts. Uh, up in out Nova Scotia, so uh, oh, wow. hopefully I could swing a, a, a you know, a, to head up there and hunt with her dad because she's like, oh, yeah. Dad, I'll take you hunting, and I'd love to get a moose, man. Oh man, yeah, you got it. Good Someday, eating. good eating, man. So let's good. get into. We've been rambling on. Um, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, Vinny. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> um, yes, tour denial, Mandy. Yeah, a little tour for everybody there. Uh, so let's get into um, your actual Indiegogo campaign. I want to play the video for anyone in the chat that's not familiar with it. And um, so I'm going to play the video here. And again, uh, Vinny, everyone can hear the video, but any guests on our show cannot. Okay. So well, it's, I'm sure you know what it says, though. City of Venus, dead city. In a post-apocalyptic future where all technology is dead except for the city floating in the sky and those who inhabit it. The ultra elite, the scientist, and the most brilliant of engineers who keep them above all others and have for centuries, along with a unique power source. Below are the experimented, mutated, and sick, and below that the few living scavengers looking desperately to survive. Our story follows an unknown woman who was thrust into this world with little to no knowledge of how she got here. This mysterious woman may hold the key to the future of humanity's survival. City of Venus, Dead City, is a fully colored comic book with story, art, logo, and lettering by Vinnie Tartamella. 
It's a sci-fi adventure with extraordinary art, heart-pounding action, and gorgeous women. Do yourself a favor. Back, City of Venus, Dead City, today. Man, that's a great video, Vinny. Great. So, yeah. you've, you've, abs- you've done absolutely everything on this book. Well, I, I got to tell you, with that video, my friend, um, who I actually I met through Twitter and everything, he goes by the moniker Red Gaze. He set that up for me recently. So I want to give a nice shout out to him. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, let's, that... go, let's all follow him. What's his uh, handle? Is it's Red Gaze? Like like yeah. like you're staring at something? G A Z E. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll follow him. Yeah. His his link should be on the video as well. Yeah. So give us a little background on City of Venus. Yeah. So it, it is a, an idea that I had and a concept I came up with, um, kind of like around the time I, I right before I started working with Todd. So, uh, yeah, it, it was like, what if like that top 1%, what, what, what if those, uh, like the new world order type people, uh, what if they got their way, what would really happen? So I put like the extreme of it of, all right, so you have these ultra elite, they, they would destroy the world essentially. So like that was kind of like the starting concept to it all, you know, and, and, uh, what if we did have like a heroic person, someone who didn't know that they had the ability to actually save the world. Um, what if we have somebody like that thrown into the mix, you know, and, and kind of, I, I, I stemmed from there. So from, from even back then, like the story evolved over the years, obviously. Um, you know, when I sat down to write it, uh, I had just so many different concepts in my head that I wanted to get down on, on, on paper, things that I always enjoyed from comic books to movies, to video games, you know, like I, I put like everything in a blender of awesome. And I just wanted to come out with something amazing. So I came up with this kind of this post-apocalyptic future, you know, all the technology is dead, like in the video said, except for that floating city. And these people, they essentially, they want to prolong their lives because mm-hmm. those, those ones who have power, what do they want? They want more power. And then what happens? They're going to die. So if they could, if they could uh, defy death, then they'll be there forever the way that they want, you know? So um, essentially, if there's like any survivors or these scavengers, uh, they, they could get captured kind of easily if, if they're found out and they get experimented on. So um, normally these experiments are failures, so they toss them back down on the world. And that's why you see like, these people who look like they're mutated or zombie-like. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not zombies. I kind of did it on purpose to throw people off because um, the overall story, I'm going to start to reveal more stuff as like you get into issue two and three. Um, about everything. So, um, yeah, so the, so the whole book, it centers around this, this main character. Her name is Jess. Um, she has a connection to this floating city, but the way that I started out the whole story, um, I is essentially the, the viewer is going to follow her from the first page. She wakes up. She doesn't know how she got there. She doesn't know what's going on. She has some memory issues. Um, she doesn't recognize this world. She's never seen a floating city before in her life. So uh, from there, we're just kind of this whole book. It, it's going to be just like nothing but action because I wanted to throw the viewer mm-hmm. in it with her. So she stumbles upon this other female character. She's trying to get answers. And then, you know, things kind of go awry. Um, if there's any technology that is used, if there's explosions or anything like that, that floating city gets notified. So then they sent that, they send out units to see if they could get those survivors and, you know, continue their experiments and stuff. So that's kind of like where the first issue and the first few pages where, where it kind of starts. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, th- there is, there's a lot of surprises I want to put in this book. So that's why it's the one thing that's kind of tricky when you want to pitch something that's going to have a lot of twists and turns. Mm-hmm. You don't want to give anything away. Yeah. 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 But, <laughs> you know, uh, but I, I got to tell you, this is, seems like an alien concept th- these days, but a comic book with action in it? <laughs> you know, you don't see that too much uh, lately, have we, on the comic shelves? Right. It's just like a panel of one character talking, a panel of another one, something yeah. goofy and cute, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're getting like, uh, you know, you and Brian Polito are like shaking the – what an interesting concept. Just have full-blown action, you know? Thanks, man. So yeah. far, you know, who would have thought of it? Yeah, I, I, I got, I don't know. In this book, I think I have like four explosions right off the bat. Nice. I think, mm-hmm. yeah, about. 
But uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, there's hot chicks in it. You really, you rarely see that in comics anymore uh, from the big two. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's buttoned up all the way. This yeah. is all. Set, this is set in a future that's so screwed up. Everything's all messed up. That's why like their clothes are practically riding off of them. Um, you know, but uh, anything that you see here, um, and you kind of question why did he do that? There is a purpose to why everything looks the way it does. Even the main character. Um. Yeah, there's certain elements I put in here that I, I put so much, and I think there's so much layering that it's it's going to pay off for the fans. You know, this is just the scratching the surface of what this story actually mm -hmm. is and where it's going to go. So it's going to be more science. You're going to see more things like that, mech robots. I'm I'm, I'm throwing everything in there, man. But, yeah, and I love it, man. I this right here, the scene yeah. here of the floating city. Thanks, I man. freaking fell in love with that, man. I saw that, and I was like, that's going on the promo. That is going on the promo. Thank you, man. And I, I love it, dude. I really do, man. I really, I love your style, man, and your coloring and everything. I like, you know what I like about it? And I and this is something I picked up on is, like, I call it, there's, like, a haze, I say. And, uh, like, I feel like when I'm looking at it, just the whole ambiance of everything, like, I feel like I'm looking at the future. Thanks, man. I, I really, really appreciate that. Well, it's a scary situation, but it's not. It's something that's not really far from the truth, though, too. Like, right. Something like that could happen. Yeah. Well, that, that's. That, yeah, that's why. I mean, it seems a little bleak, but that's why I kind of did it anyway. But uh, it's also I want to show the contrast. Like I was saying, it's so like pristine looking. It, it's you know that looks like the future, and then what right below it, it is complete destruction. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it's something that visually you want those contrasts. You want things like that that are that are going to bring the viewer in. You know, the colors, uh, mm -hmm. every kind of those those elements, they work so beautifully together. Yeah. Um, so it, for me, it's always about raising the bar, you know? Yeah. So how did you create this world, though? Like what would I mean, you know, I'm sure just like most creators do. You, you probably did a lot of research on things, maybe watch things. Or, um, how did you envision the aesthetics of this world? Well, from like the concept that I had, so I wanted this book to be set so so far into the future that no one could be like, well, that didn't happen over here and that, I, I, I don't need that. What I needed <laughs> to, was to tell a story, <laughs> to tell a, a straight up story that's gonna be fun mm -hmm. where I set the rules. So um, there is gonna be a lot explained between like, See, I, I don't want to say how far into the future it is because it could give things away too, so I'm not going to. But there's enough uh, uh, time and space that, that goes by where um, – um, uh, how can I say this? I should, no, I, I'm going to give it away if I do. No. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I Tell us your think, secrets. Think, 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 think of Chicago, right? Um, like back, back in the 20s and stuff and – uh, there was like fires and things that happened. What mm -hmm. did they do? They didn't tear everything back down. They built on top of it. Yeah. So I did that with this story, but I put it to the extreme of centuries. So what if there's a bunch of wars that happen? You know, people try to rebuild again. Society tried to start. And then, again, there's a giant one that happens, and it takes out almost everything. The only thing that's left standing is this city. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I have those elements, and that's why there's going to be a lot of surprises. So you'll see things that were maybe used in wars centuries ago that might be popping up in this book. So it, it, it's stuff like that. So I, I kind of went with that idea, that concept. And since that was one of my jobs as well. So it's not just with Todd, but I, I started doing other freelance work. Um, I, I did concept artwork for, for movies and games. I did storyboards. So I always have that designer mentality is always in me. And I was always a penciler first. Then mm -hmm. I taught myself how to paint. So I, I have, I come from a designer's background essentially. And like, I like line work. I, I like a whole bunch of different things. So I wanted to put it all into this. So it kind of, it evolved on its own almost. Very, Very cool. cool. Yeah. And it took out, took on a life of its own. Thank you, man. And just yeah. that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> it's cool. Totally. So how about now for your for your main character? I mean, mm -hmm. um, obviously, I have a question. What made you go with a female lead versus a male lead? Um, again, it's just it's one of those the first the first things that that I had in my head when I created the story. So mm -hmm. when I originally did the story, there was more of a more of a society, mm -hmm. and um, it, the focus was on on two people and then I, I i leaned more towards the female one out of out of the story 
Um, but I didn't throw away the other character. The other character is definitely going to be in this one as well. But, um, I, I, you know, people love the way I draw women anyway. So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, why, why would I do a male character on this then? If people want to see my women and if it's going to be in the world that I'm setting it in, that's going to be the contrast. It's going to be the hotness and the beauty versus the destruction, the bleakness, the monsters, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. It's, it's, awesome, I think man. It's a good so balance. That, that is a good balance, dude. That is Thanks. a great balance. And I'm sorry, you may have said this already, um, but I was, I was just making some replies in the chat. Um, this, how many parts is this book? Well, uh, for this one, um, the first issue is, is 28 pages, front cover to back cover. But uh, I had originally started this book before I knew about like the crowdfunding thing. And mm -hmm. I was kind of going almost by the rules of what kind of mainstream was doing with, like with the page numbers. But mm -hmm. I'm throwing that all out the window. So I originally, it was going to be like maybe 10 to 12 issues, like a maxi series. But I'm going to make it closer, I think, to maybe like six issues and um essentially make them like oversized and page count like so we're talking maybe f f between 40 and 50 pages give or take uh depending on like w w what the story needs um but like w when i'm at the mid the midway point i guess i'll know if i want to do more more issues or not um because mm -hmm. yeah because this world could there's a lot that could definitely happen but like i know what i want for like the main yeah. story itself yeah now, do you have anything beyond City of Venus that maybe you're looking to also get into crowdfunding? Is there anything else you're working on? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so my, my first campaign was uh, a ghost story called Through the Woods. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a three-issue miniseries. Uh, my brother Frank, uh, he worked with me on it. He was the writer on it. Uh, I did the first draft of the story. It was going to end up being a horror book. And he went, well, why don't, we, why don't we do ghost story? He goes, I have an idea. So I'm like, you know what? I dig it. He rewrote the first issue. Um, I said, all right, that's perfect. I, I love it. Do issues two and three. So he wrote them all out. We bounced ideas back and forth, mm -hmm. um, character design, all that kind of stuff. Um, I had those completed. Um, I got those. Any Anyone who backed me, I know I didn't hit my goal on it, but at the time, I, I put a number that was way too high because, again, I didn't know. I heard wrong information. But I made enough where I, all my would be fulfilled and I, I did that so my following campaign I did an art book so essentially like most of like the prints and things like that or just the cool fun pieces that I that I've done over the years uh, I decided I'm gonna put them in a comic book format uh, I'm gonna make them like 52 pages I, I, I literally split it in half so like I had like 104 pieces I can actually there's a couple more but I left them out uh, I took like the best of the best essentially and I split them up into two books. So my, my second campaign was The Art of Vinnie Tartamella, Volume 1. And that's actually in demand right now. I put a link on this campaign as well, like near the bottom. But um, I did it for a reason because with this campaign, I put Volume 2 as almost like exclusive to this campaign. So it's like, you know, when you go to the tier section, um, I, I'm doing, uh, like I have the book by itself, City of Venus. But then I have the option of City of Venus with Volume Two of my art book, which is a collection, full color of uh, like pinup stuff, monsters, superhero, you name it, it's in there. Mm -hmm. uh, something exactly. cool and fun for everybody. Yeah. So, like with these campaigns, um, and my and the company that I made, it's Mela Art World because it's a world of different stuff I want to give people. It's not just a specific genre. So we had Ghost Story. This is future. I have mm -hmm. art books. After this, I'm literally I'm working on a pirate story right now. Um, I'm maybe a th uh, two thirds of the way through. Mm -hmm. I'm having a ball on it. I'm having so much fun. Um, that one's gonna have uh, two main characters, male and female. Um, that world's gonna be amazing. I mean, the stuff that I have planned for it and what the artwork I have done. I want to start teasing it, but uh, I kind of want to. I want to make sure this is kind of out of the way because you know, juggling too much. Yeah. Could be too much. But even before I launch that, um, I have a children's book that I had done. Um, it's totally completed. I think I'm gonna do a crowdfunding for that as well. Holy so crap. after this, yeah, after this campaign, because um, it, it's uh, Halloween themed. Yeah. So I, I'm 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 gonna have to work kind of quickly. So I might launch it, maybe. I want to say maybe the end of August, beginning of September. Mm -hmm. 
Nice, nice. nice. Well, fulfill yeah. as as I've said, and me and Billy talk about man, fulfillment is key, dude. You know, mm -hmm. you got to make sure yeah. you get your projects going, get them out on time, and uh, you know, like you're saying, if you if you take on too much and promise too much and it it doesn't work out, yeah, it doesn't work out, man. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's and, and you you learn you learn too yeah. from from the other from the other campaigns. So like what what I screwed up a little bit on the first campaign, uh, I made sure the second one and the third one they're going to be better. But mm -hmm. that's the one thing people will get from me is a guarantee that um, these books are completed. You know, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not messing around. So if I'm running a campaign, that book is finished. It's ready to go. It's just the only thing you're waiting for is to be printed and then mailed out to you. That's yeah. it. So and, and anyone who did back me, all my supporters, they, they could speak for me. That's why I retweet them whenever they get the book. I'm letting people mm -hmm. know. You 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 back my projects. You're gonna get your books and fast and at a high quality. Yeah. So how long does it actually make? It? So for anyone out there that's aspiring to or in the process of creating their book, I mean, how long for your process does it take you to go from point A to to, to from A to Z with your book? How long does it take you to make your book? Well, they all vary. They really do because I'm I'm essentially I'm still I'm freelancing too. So mm -hmm. I'll put maybe I'll get like a page or two done and then I'll, I got to take the, the, the other paying work that, you know, that's helps you live. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you can't do that, then you're in trouble. So it, it's been spaced out. So like, uh, for through the woods, like I had the first issue completed for a while. Um, and then I was doing like a couple pages here and there. So it, it all kind of depends. Um, I want to say this one, uh, city of Venus, maybe that took me, I want to say maybe three months to do give or take mm -hmm. something that, around there is that from, is that everything with the um the coloring too yeah pe yeah pencil straight through i'm even doing the lettering on this oh wow yeah now, I, now I, how are you hand lettering it is there a particular program you like to use that you could share with people and, and a particular font mm -hmm. uh there was actually a, a blue line I, I think it was blue line they had they had a cd or something with the with like the word balloons and a couple mm -hmm. of like uh, like the action things or whatever, and I kind of worked off of that, and I modified things. So like um, I, I didn't just lift whatever they had. I, I kind of I worked and fixed that as well. But it it, it was great to start off with because um, I had actually done a free comic book that I have on my DeviantArt of a story with Spider Man and the Hulk, where I did all this beautiful work, right? And then I screwed up completely on all the lettering, the word balloons. Because there was a family crisis that happened when I was working on it. So I just said, you know what? I don't have time. I just slapped it all together. It looks sloppy. After the fact, I hated every second of that. It oh. pissed me off so much. Mm. I went, no. I did my research. I went back. I said, when, I, when I'm working on my comics, I'm going to make sure I'm meticulous with everything. Like a perfectionist. If, if the word balloons don't look even slightly right, I'm going to redo it completely. And, you know, that's kind of the process I, I, I went through. So. Now things are a lot smoother. <laughs> nice. And uh, Colonel Irwin uh, can verify that Vinny's customer service is excellent. Thank you, man. Yes. Thank you so, so much. Some, let's talk at some advice. I mean, what advice can you give out there? What's the, A, if someone came to you and said, hey, Vinny, I'm, I'm starting my first uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, what can you tell me? Is the What can I do? What's the best thing I can do for my campaign? And then, part B, What's the thing not to do? Well, the, the thing not to do is don't don't exceed your goals. I know you might have a number in your head. Don't go that route. Um, mm -hmm. Your first campaign is going to be the toughest campaign. So aim low on it, but think high with what you want to give people. Um, you, you have to really manage your, your time because you have to promote the hell out of it as well. Mm -hmm. If you don't promote it properly, your numbers aren't going to go up. So, um, yeah, definitely look at that and make sure, calculate uh, your expenses. A lot of people don't do that when they try to figure in these things, you know, including like shipping. Shipping's big. If, yeah. if, you, if you go over 12 ounces, you hit a pound, your prices are going to skyrocket. And especially overseas, that'll kill you. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you got to really manage things properly. Make a list. What's going to work? What What do you think might not work? Mm -hmm. um, even your perks and your stretch goals. 
try to figure them out beforehand as well. Um, I know like with this campaign with City of Venus, I wasn't going to launch it as quickly as I did. I was still pushing the art book, but um, I, I got an Ethan stream. He liked my work a lot, and um, there was a couple of other creators as well with, with their cool projects. Mm -hmm. And like Von Klaus, he, he was there as well. So we all did an, uh, an amazing job. He loved it, and he goes, I'm going to go on the following day. So I went, you know, they all have these great comic books. I'm pushing an art book. I can't talk much about it. There's some things I can't show in it. So I'm like, you know what? Uh, I do. I, I have this awesome project that I want to do, but I was going to wait until some other things were out of the way so I can manage yeah. my time. But I said, screw it. I pulled the trigger on it. I set up the whole campaign in a day, and I launched it pretty much on that day and then on his show. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it was ballsy, but... I pulled the trigger anyway, and I'm happy I did because, uh, you know, I, I got a lot more people, more eyes on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Ethan fell in love with it. He's like, so, Vinny, uh, where's the link to your, your was it an art book, sketchbook? I went, actually, today I'm pushing a comic book <laughs> called City of Venus. He's like, oh, oh, okay. And when he saw it, he was like, holy sh, look at the, w wow, look, look, he draws women. Oh, my God. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> that, that, I did the right thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, you know, because you also thought of it like a business, which is great because, you know, that's the mentality is that we all have our little dream projects. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this you got to think of it like a business. Yeah. You know, when Stan, you know, when they when he was at Timely and, and even in the funny, crazy days of Marvel, where it looked like it was a zoo in there, you know, everyone's having fun and all this. But, man, that was all business. Everything oh, was oh, yeah. calculated. And, and, you know, and that's the one thing about Stan is that, yeah, he was a great creator and a great writer, but. You know, he's a hell of a businessman, I'll tell you that. Oh, he absolutely oh, yeah. was. And I'll tell you one thing, too. With everything he was doing, he always made time for the fans, and that's where I got that from. Because yeah. I remember the first time I met him, uh, he loved my work. I think I was I was still in high school, and I showed him some of it. He's like, kid, you have it. Oh, he goes, you definitely have it. He goes, but at the time, Marvel was – they were in big trouble. It was before the Spider-Man movie, you know, the deal happened and all that. So he goes – don't go with them. Go to the other guys. He was trying to tip me off. He oh, really? Was, he was straight. Really? He was straight with everyone. He never He never just gave that BS. Yeah, he put the smile on for people and this and that. But if he's going to come at you like a real person, he really does. Mm -hmm. I met him a couple times after that. Super great guy. And the last time I met him, he actually he had bought a couple of original pieces from me. Wow. Wow. You know, that's, I, that's an honor I, right there absolutely i was mind blown by it and you know and and he did it at a good time too because i was getting discouraged at some of these shows you know he popped it was at uh c2e2 he came by with a crew of his guys they were they were walking him to his table he stopped and he's like i i, I want those pieces you know and he sent the guys over and like stan wants to buy these from you know i'm like oh my god thank you he signed some some of my work as well i uh, dude i was floored wow. floored <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing. Yeah, and and um, the honesty there, you know, telling you, hey, you know, you got it, but don't yeah. go here. <laughs> yeah. But wasn't there, exactly. correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't there a time of like, obviously, yeah, it's Stan Lee, Marvel, this and that, but wasn't he not a fil like actually on the payroll at some point? Right. Didn't he have his own, he had his own production company, his own publishing company and everything? Yeah. I yeah. think it was, uh, what was it, POW or? Pow, or... Was it Stan Lee Media or, I remember the POW sounds familiar. I'm trying to remember, yeah. but I don't really. I can't yeah, remember what the name of it was. Yeah, it's like POW something, right? Wasn't yeah, it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, because he, yeah, he separated from them because uh, of what was going on. You remember, he even had a lawsuit with them at one point. Yeah, he did. Cause, yeah, because they said even like the cameo for the X-Men movie, um, there were certain people who wanted him there, but Marvel mm -hmm. didn't want him there. So oh, he, really? Yeah, he felt very uneasy about, about even going. But he, he decided why not. He went there, and then the whole cast and crew, they just ran up to him. They treated him like gold. Yeah. You know, some of them were like, oh, oh, could you sign this? He was more than happy. They said he was practically in tears. So mm -hmm. from that point on, I guess things started to mend and fix itself. So, you know. Yeah. Plus so they realized what an asset he was. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You, know, well, you, got, a, you got a great story, too, how you first met him, Billy. Oh, my Stan Lee story? Oh, yeah. yeah. I have a really funny Stan Lee story, if you don't mind me, you know, yeah. tell us, Vinny, it's your stream. I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, we, um, it, it, it was, it was San Diego, 1994, 25 years ago. 
And my wife, uh, you know, we were at the booth and it was real busy. Uh, it was pretty cool because we were like the flavor of the month, us and Brian, Polito and Fran. And um, mm -hmm. we didn't know anybody. We had met, I had met Jeff Smith and Jeff took me around and it was so cool because he had like, you had me, Brian with, with you know, Brian and Fran with Lady Death and Debbie with She. Then you yeah. had, um, you know, Jeff Smith with Bone and we were all right around each other. Uh, Bat and Lash was there. We, that's when he, he had launched Wolf and Bird. And uh, it was just a great, great, great time. All these, yeah, all these young cartoonists that wanted to do their own comic books. So, and, you know, and, and you know, and uh, so my wife goes to get us something to eat. I'm like, you know, you know, I'm hungry, honey. Can you get something to eat? So she goes to on the concession stand and she strikes up this conversation with this very elegant, beautiful woman, uh, an older woman uh, talking about our we both had Dobermans at the time. And, um, so. Uh, so, so uh, she strikes the conversation about their dogs, our dogs. All of a sudden, um, Debbie comes back, and she's just sitting there, and I'm just working. And all of a sudden, I see her get up, and she walks. And she just gets out of the booth and runs up waving. And then I see this woman waving back at her, and, come, and, and they're coming to see us. And this woman was Joan Lee, and who's standing right next to her? Stan. <laughs> Stan Lee. So Joan, <laughs> Stan Lee's wife in 1994 is online at the concession stand getting something to eat. And, and uh, Joan's like, yeah, we were looking for you. I wanted to bring Stan over to meet you guys. And, and uh, Debbie's like, yeah, these are my, this is my new friend, Joan. <laughs> Whoa, this is your thing you do. I'm like, yeah, I make a comic book. It's my own comic book. He's like, this is fantastic, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and, and that's how I got to meet Stan is, is through uh, my wife and, and his wife's, uh, you know, our mutual love of dogs. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm just so mad that I didn't take a photo. Mm. Oh, oh, dude! Because I, like, oh, I was nervous, I should have just said, "Hey, Stan, can we can we take a picture, please?" You know, mm -hmm. in the four of us, and that would have been, you know, something to remember. But you yeah. never, you know, you get yeah. nervous about it and things like that. But that was totally. that was my Stan Lee story. Yeah, I, I I ran into a bunch of uh, a bunch of situations like that as well. Same thing. It's like, oh my god, why didn't I get a photo? Why didn't I do this? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yep. But not 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 to leave DC out. I could tell you a good story too with my father. Um. He's actually, he's a barber, and he came from, uh, when he came from Italy, he started working in New York in the city, mm -hmm. and uh, he started cutting hair. He was young. He was like 16, um, but they liked him. They saw what he could do, so he started becoming a regular in there, and he's cutting all these different clients' hair. One guy comes in, and he, he's, he's talking to him about stuff, uh, uh, about these comic book characters, and he's like... Oh, okay. Like my father didn't really think much of it. He's like, I, I don't have time for comics. Like, you know, I'm not, that's not what I'm thinking about. It's more for little kids for him at the moment, you know. Um, so the guy keeps coming in. So then on, on, on the on the holidays, he would give him like little drawings, little doodles. Um, and, he, and he'd hand it to him with the tip. And he's like, oh, oh, wow, I really appreciate it. You know, real, real nice guy, great guy. Then he starts telling him, he goes, I got a little show that's going to happen. Um... Uh, I, I think you should start to get some stock. And he's like, what do you mean? At the time, I think it was CBS. So he goes, again, my father didn't know much about that stuff. You know, he, he came from Italy. He's cutting hair. What does he know about stock? So, you know, over time, he ended up finding out who this person was. You know who this guy was? Who, who he, he was, he was uh, his customer? It was Bob Kane. Really? What? He was, he was telling him about Batman. Wow. <laughs> Did Could you, you did believe you that? Any of those cartoons and stuff? Yeah, he was giving them little drawings, little doodles, gift cards, and wow. you know, I, unbelievable, unbelievable. That's and cool. it's it it's funny too because then when my father, you know, around you know 1989 or whatever, when the movie mm -hmm. was coming out, we were all so into it already, and we started telling him more about the story of Batman because again, my father wasn't really paying too much attention, mm -hmm. yeah. so he's like. When we, we told him the story, he's like, are you kidding me? I said, what? He goes, Alfred, uh, that was the name of the guy who owned the barber shop. He named it, he named the butler after him. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> he started telling us all these little things. Like, are you kidding me? I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. So it, it's it, it's amazing how it kind of all comes like full circle to almost. <laughs> yeah, That's what a, crazy. wow, what a story. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. Do you have like, any of that art yourself? Yeah, I wish. 
My yeah. my father, he would take the tip, he'd take the card after a day, throw it in the garbage. I'm like, are oh, you kidding? Oh, no, you can't. Are Don't you tell kidding? us that. Lie to us, yeah. Vinny. Tell him you got him freaking framed in your studio or something. Yeah, Dude. lie, man. Ah. That's I true. wish. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, right, bro? Uh, yeah. yeah, and could you imagine the stock, too? Yeah. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. So, Vinny, man, yeah. I have to ask you. So you, it seems like you bust your ass constantly working on comics and things all day long and, and your commissions and your private work. I mean, what do you do outside of the world of comics? You got any other passions or things? Yeah, well, for, for a long time, I mean, I really, I love soccer. Um, I, I played for for a number of years, like pickup games locally. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I got to play with uh, a couple of guys who made it to the national team for the U.S. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. Um yeah, the, the stuff like that I dig. I still love reading. I still, you know, video games. I'm, I mean, even as I'm getting older, with the technology that's out there, the stuff that's happening, if any of you guys even mm -hmm. touch the Spider-Man game, dude, it's it's jaw-dropping what, what could be accomplished, you know? But, uh, yeah, I dig that. Movies, you know, hanging out with friends and family. It, you do what you can. But again, it's the time constraints. They're all different on, on artists, you know? So yeah. some nights you'll, you'll, you'll be going to bed at the uh, ass crack of dawn, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, trying to make a deadline. Yep, but. exactly. And then and blowing that and getting upset and stressing out, right? All that stuff. Oh my God! Tell me about it. All the gray hairs I have. <laughs> just just, <laughs> just in the last couple of months. <laughs> and then it doesn't seem like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, right? It feels like that, but then you know there, there is a satisfaction once you have that book in your hands, and once you start to hear from the fans, you know, I, I think it's worth it at at that point. Yeah, I, I, I know, and, and, and it, what's cool about crowdfunding comics is that when you put yourself out there to, to publish your own book, you, you, you give your fans a special insight that they never see, mm -hmm. um, especially, and that's what's important about the social media, and if you can, you know, do your YouTube channel and show your YouTube videos and talk to them, almost like a confession, because you are stressing out over this, right? I mean, oh, yeah. shoot, I give myself cold sores, you know? Um, over if I stress out so bad and things like that and oh, yeah. and uh, it's kind of cool to share that so then your fans do get appreciation of how much work you put into it because right Vinny I mean you can draw a book in a week if you want mm -hmm. you know it, it's not gonna look like what you want but because you love it so much that's what takes the time that's what takes you three months to do a book exactly you know? and, and and what's cool about the crowdfunding thing is that those fans know that you because they're mm -hmm. hearing from you and they and they they're a part of you and they're pushing for you and that's oh, what yeah. I've gotten so you know, it, it, dude. It, it it really it really is. I I gotta say that too because um a lot of people don't know it or maybe they do, but most artists, most most writers and artists, it's such a solitary life yeah. when they're working. The depression, a lot of people. I mean, including myself, I've suffered from it for for a number of years. You know, uh, even this week. I mean, I've had you know bouts of it here and there, but it's when you could connect with these fans, when you could connect with these other people, when you're making friends with them, that fixes things. It helps mm -hmm. things. You yeah. know what you're doing. It's not for nothing. You're making people happy. And you're not only that, you're doing it with stories that you're able to tell. You're creating this world, you know, yeah. and people they are, they are not only loving it, but they want to know more about it. They want to, they're thirsty for the next issue, you know? And to me, that's really cool. That's something special. Yeah. And you make it original. I mean, there's mm -hmm. nothing out there like your, like your book. You know, City of Venus, there's nothing like it. And I just love the idea of this dead city, you know what I mean? That's yeah. beneath the, you know, unless the dead city, even though the, the dead city is the floating one in a way, you know? And well, well, the light, they're actually what's alive is down beneath it, you know? Well, and, and, and that's the thing, too. It's, I, it, things appear a certain way. You're very close to some stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I, there are cracks in the walls. Things aren't as pristine as you think they are, you know. Yeah. That, and that's, that's part of the surprise of it. And the other thing I want to let people know, too, because a lot of people, if they have these, these concepts of floating cities and stuff, I'm actually showing, I'm going to show it uh, throughout the course of the story, how that city got there, why it got there, why is there only one. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm going to be answering those questions. Most people don't. It's just like, oh, it's just it's there for aesthetic reasons or because it's a cool location. No, I'm doing it for a reason. Everything, almost everything you see in this book is done for a reason, you know? Yeah. Wow. Ah, I'm looking forward to it, man. This is a yeah. great book. 
Thanks, it man. It really is, man. And it, you know what it is, too? It's just knowing how much you put into it. I mean, it, it's all you, man. You're yeah, the whole team. This is complete. This is like your baby right here, man. This is everything. Oh, wow. It's definitely you a know? passion project. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, and we can, and definitely we can tell. So, guys, if you, if you can, uh, you know, go back after the show, check it out again, and uh, if you can back it, let's help support and let's keep moving this thing. There's 20, 22 days left. Um, it's incredible work. You know, I'm looking at you know more of the images here, and I mean, this really is beautiful. And remember, guys, you know, we all have budgets. And the more and more we grow and the more and more we want, we want to give everything we have, right? We want to support everybody, but sometimes we can't, right? But we can always share. You know, we're all on different social media. Share, Mm -hmm. share, 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 share. It takes a couple seconds to share a tweet, to post on Facebook, to throw to post on Instagram, Tumblr. You know, put something up there. Help help everyone out because, you know what, with this community um, and and what's being built up, I mean, everyone's got everyone's back, you know? Totally. It's definitely yeah, it's building, it's the and, and we're building worlds together. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, totally. You know? We're sharing worlds. It's it. I don't know. I, I like I said. I know. I, I'm just a. I guess I'm a fan of the whole movement. I really, nice. and and I just get I get so inspired. I get so you know so excited. I love that's you know it's you know it's all I talk about right, Niall. I mean you know that we we love talking about it. Yeah. We love the whole the, the whole creativity. All these amazing creators. You know, now Vinny, we've known each other a long time, mm-hmm. but all but we haven't talked in talked in a while just because of just how busy people are and exactly. live and everything like that. And it's so great now to have this this chat. You know what I mean? This this yeah. live thing. And like I said, you went on Ethan's yeah. show. You mm-hmm. go. You you met new people through that. And mm-hmm. man, it's just it's a it's a wonderful, inspiring time to be a creator. Yeah, it it, it, re- it really is, Billy. And like I was saying too. Um, as an example, uh, the last time we saw each other was, I think, at West Palm Beach. You came over. I had a crowd of people around. You just a quick hello, you know. And then when I wanted, when I got free time, I went to go by your table, and it was the other situation. And I'm like, all right, we'll try to catch each other another time. Because right. it, it, it's crazy how these things go, you know. Yeah. But um, like I, I said, I think on the chat on on one of your previous uh, streams, um, I said uh, in in the chat what Billy. And Niall, what you guys are doing right now is amazing. It's the the crowdfunding comics. What you're doing, you're you're showcasing all these guys. It's and girls. It's so important what you're doing, and especially that you're doing these panels now at the conventions, dude. It's brilliant. My hat goes off to you. I think you, you guys are awesome. This is amazing. More people should subscribe to your channel. That's for sure. Click like these buttons. Uh, Ring the bells, do all everything you got to do. Show that support because it's word of mouth. It's it's yeah. mm-hmm. each person helping one another. You know, it, yeah. it's a good thing. And I'll tell you, man, we're we're a small guy out there right now. We've been what what Billy? We're like four or five months now. We've been doing this, and I mean, we've been cranking at it three four shows a week, trying to get high. You know, people highlighted. And we're slowly growing, but you know, Billy can attest to this. You know, people come up to him. What are you guys doing? What is this yeah. crowdfunding comments? People know about us, man. They know what we're doing. And, yep. uh, you know, it is, it's great, you know, and, and, and yep. I love doing this show, man. It is just awe inspiring. Like when me and Billy talk, we probably, sh- dude, we talk every day. <laughs> we would call one another. Hey, I had this idea. Oh my God. I had, oh, really? What is it? And our conversation like, really? What? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Two chance. Go. What's going on? And, and like, we're just so hyped, man. We love yeah, what we're doing, yeah. dude. It's like, who do we got on tonight? Oh yeah. Yeah. We got this guy. Out. Oh yeah. This is going to be nice. great. You know, I mean, it, it's so much fun, and we I have so many ideas and things. But it's like time, right? Time. Yep. You want to do all this stuff, but you know, we've got Frank Amazing, who's been, a, you know, assistant producers doing some great things. We got some other people, you know, that are, that are willing to do some stuff. And I mean, you know, we're gonna do it. You know, we've got, uh, we're gonna, we'll be getting together soon to talk about some new things and some plans. And you know, I hope it keeps. You know, we, we're growing steady. You know, and totally. and thank you to all you guys out there who. Who watched the show, Vinny? Thank you for retweeting and you know being so supportive of what we're doing too. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Vinny. Any yeah. any time, my friends. Any time. Yeah, I can't uh, thank all you guys enough. This has been so much fun in such a short period of time, you know. So it's it's crazy. I I can't wait to see where we are a year from now, you know, or a yeah. year from oh, when yeah. we started in the live panels, you know. Yeah. If we, and again, if you're uh, attending any cons or anything that uh, Billy's at or Billy and I are at, um, you know, let us let us know. 
you know, because oh, that's dude, I, I'd love to. We yeah, just had, we, and Vinny, if you're at a show with us, if you don't mind coming on, we we're going to start doing panels like I'm going to start making my panels crowdfunding comics panels. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have our you know, we had our first one at San Diego and that was huge. We had two rooms. It, it was just fantastic. Great. A great oh. group of creators on there. Um, mm-hmm. Our second one, which will be Nile Scholars first panel ever. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Uh, next week, so uh, oh, wow. excited I'm not about wear that. a shirt. It's but um, awesome. you know, we come back down. I come back down to Florida. I'd love that. You know, and and the, and the promoters allow us to do this. Um, we'd love to have you on, Vinny, or when you're at another New York show. We're gonna try for New York oh. Comic Con. I gotta get in touch with Mike Negan dude. about. It. Dang it. Keep yeah, going. yeah, I dude, I'd be honored. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Eric Hawkins, my book is slated to launch 2020. Oh, fantastic, man. Yes. You, got another, you know, and let's just keep doing it. All, you guys can do, all do it. You guys can be, you know, the next Billy, the next Vinny, the next uh, Niall Scala when he gets going with it. Mm-hmm. Damn right. Amazing, because Frank Amazing, even though he doesn't want to, we're going to have him have one. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be like kicking people's tables at cons and be like, read my books. I'm going to be going yeah. nuts. <laughs> I'm going to be making a scene. <laughs> I love it. But it's yeah. a great time. So yeah, anyway, it's fun, dude. We've had we've had Vinny on for an hour. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah, man, it's been a great time, and I know Billy's got work to do. I got to jump back on the drawing table to get some more pages roughed. And um, yeah, man, this is great. So hey, let's get into our crowdfunding call out tonight. I've got Metal Shark Bro too. I don't know if you guys have been following any of this. I did. Um, I did uh, back Metal Shark one issue the first issue and it's awesome the stylization of this book by walter ostyle um osley i'm sorry i always say ostyle walter osley uh bob france kevin cuff uh chaz i mean they're all amazing creators i know them um through facebook actually and um i mean these guys are awesome i love their art the story is incredible it's original um really i really want to encourage you guys to check this book out it's a cool style. That it's is a, beautiful. Walter's yeah. style, his pencils are awesome. Um, nice. You know, he, his style is like, you see it, you're like, oh, that, that's Walter. You know, yeah. he's doing some great stuff. Um, I'm going to try to get these guys scheduled. I want to get the whole creative team on, and there's a reason for that. These guys have a chemistry that is just, it, it's an, you know, I'd be doing a disservice to uh, other creators, fans, um and people just a, a creative team that is just so bonded um the guys are awesome so let me play the video for you guys and this is uh metal shark bro island of misfit bros so this is the second book in their series the last time we saw metal shark bro he was swimming off into the sunset returned to his shark form after defeating satan's douchey nephew Beelzebra. happily ever after i think not His best buddy, Ira, was kidnapped by the evil creation known only as Hamzig. Hamzig swears bloody revenge against Metal Shark Bro for killing his creator, Beelzebra. So Metal Shark Bro cuts and slashes back into action to save his friend Ira from the island of misfit bros. Metal Shark Bro Volume 2 live on Kickstarter. We've got some wonderful rewards for backers, including Kickstarter exclusive art book featuring work from the likes of Drew Moss, Brian Level, Christian Debari, Josh Hood, Jamie Jones, Hoyt Silva, and so many more. We've got t-shirts and brand new enamel pens featuring Ninja Nuns, that evil Hamzig, and my personal favorite, Meth Gator. Thank you for watching the Metal Shark Bro Volume 2 Kickstarter video. Back this book today. Awesome. I just love this. So yeah, guys, check it out. If you can back it, back it. They've got 15 days to go. They do have, they're reaching for a, a large goal. You know, they're, uh, you know, half, basically half, a little more than halfway there. They're looking for a pledge of $24,666. Hmm, interesting number. Um, they're at 285 backers, 15 days to go. If you can back it, back it. If you can't, you can't. Remember, guys, comics are a business. There's great creators on all sides. Kickstarters, Indiegogos. You know, help your brethren out. Uh, if you can't, if you can, just keep spreading the word. So, yeah, this is awesome. Check this one out. And uh, some of you guys may know I've got a little Stoker and Wells still on the screen. Um, a book I believe in, a book I love. 
And I'm just keeping that up to help support our guest from the other night, Mr. Steven Piros. Um, so again, man, Vinny, this has been freaking yes. awesome. So glad to have you on the show. Thank love your you, story. Love what you're doing. Love your portfolio of work. I need to see more. We got to have you back on the show. You know, of once course. you're on, you're on, man. You're family. You want to come on? You got an idea for something? You email me. You know, oh, dude, I love to. You guys have been fantastic. Thanks. I really appreciate the opportunity as well. Yeah, man. Guys, support these books, please. City of Venus, we're close to our stretch goal. If we hit that, you guys get a free piece of artwork. I'm doing like a postcard for you guys. Mm -hmm. I showed some of the artwork on Twitter. Uh, I'm working on it right now. But uh, yeah, please help out. Yeah. And don't forget, Mr. Tucci and his wonderful team and, and his lovely wife, Deb, are freaking busting their asses. Getting <laughs> Zombie Sama out to the masses. Yeah, see how see busting their asses, getting oh, zombie yeah. sama out to the masses. You see what I did right there? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I did that. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, he's uh, so he, everything's going. Look at this. It's fantastic. What's that, buddy? It's ten thirty-seven. I'm gonna go eat some dinner. Yes. But guys, please follow, uh, share Vinny's uh, 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 kicks uh, Indiegogo. Sorry, Vinny. Um, uh, follow him on social media. If you could pledge, please pledge for him. He's one of the best guys in the industry, one of the most talented people out there, and uh, he really is one of the good guys, and it's a real honor to have you. You're really a, an extraordinarily talented young man, and it's a, it's, a, it's a privilege to have been friends with you for this long, buddy. Yeah, Thank man. you, Billy, man. Your words mean a lot. Support means everything. You guys all rock. Yeah. yeah. You rock, brother. All right, guys. You rock, so, man, uh, everyone. Yes, Billy. I think it's time to say goodnight. I believe it is. And uh, remember, what are we here for today? City of Venus. Dead yes. city. It's the dead city, boys and girls. So thanks for having you. Thanks for having. Uh, thank you for coming on, Vinny. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. And Vinny, before we sign off real quick, how can everyone follow you? Yeah. Uh, I'm on Twitter. It's Vinny Art. V-I-N-N-I-E-A-R-T. Uh, Facebook, same name. But you could also find me under Mella Art World on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Vinny Art. I'm on Art Station. I have a YouTube. Type my name in. You can find me. My logo is the city of Vinny right now. Um, yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Remember to support Vinny, City of Venus. And uh, we will see you all tomorrow night with our uh, special guest, which is going to be Marat Michaels, um, creator of Dead Poo, Hardly Thin. <laughs> He's worked on many great things. Vinny, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the man. Um, but Marat will be on tomorrow night uh, with talking about his latest Kickstarter. Cool, man. I'll be checking it out. There you go. Yeah, join in, man. All right, everyone. Have a great night, and we will see you tomorrow. See you guys later. Bye, Thanks. everyone. Thanks, Vinny. Good night. No Good night. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning into Crowdfunding Comics. We look forward to hanging out with all of our crowdfunding fans every time we go live. And don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel. And there's a little bell. You may want to hit that too. This way you get all the great notifications when we go live and when we upload some awesome content. You want to follow us? Sure, go right ahead at Twitter at Crowdfund Comics with an X. Instagram, Crowdfunding Comics, and Facebook at Crowdfunding Comics. Till next time, crowdfunding fans, we'll see you soon.